Hello again and welcome back to my channel and welcome to new subscribers who've joined over the course of the last couple of days and I hope you enjoy some of the other content on the channel. It's Tuesday evening around tea time here and my plan was to do this video sat on the garden bench from episode one of Handmade Britain's Best Woodworker with the lovely backdrop of our back garden but as you can here and see now it's absolutely lashing it down outside we get lots of rain in the northwest of england and it's just one of those days now before i talk about my big build in a little bit more detail and also uh, the skills challenge and just the episode in general just a it's a great opportunity for me to be able to do this just a huge sincere thank you for all your kind words your good wishes, your well dones, your appreciation, everything over the course of the last couple of days that has come in via Instagram, Facebook, YouTube messages, direct messages, emails and stuff have been a little bit uh, inundated which has been overwhelming in an incredible way and just thank you so much for your support. There's so many of you who've been on the journey if you like from when I started this YouTube adventure uh, supporting me all that time and me keeping all the handmade uh, secret from you from over a year so thank you for all those and also uh, an influx of new people who've got on board I've been watched the, the TV show a couple of nights ago or on catch up on E4 I think it is so thanks for you know uh, joining in thanks for all your appreciation thanks for your count kind words really really appreciated now what I'd like to do just in this episode is talk a little bit in more detail about my big build, uh, the design process, the reasons I did things, and I'm also going to look at the mistakes I made over the course of the two days. Of course, um, you only get a snapshot on the programme. It's... Um, I was an absolute bag of nerves 10-15 minutes before watching it as it started. Started to relax a little bit more and enjoy the show. I've watched it back once since, so I've seen it a couple of times now. And it's the pace is frenetic, but that's kind of reflective of the environment that we were in, uh, in the workshop there or the set or whatever you want to call it. And from an editing perspective, it must just be an absolute nightmare. You're talking hundreds of hours of footage You've got 10 contributors, so you've got, you've got to get over 10 designs. You've got to get to know everyone a little bit. You've got to see a little bit of the process of the build. You've then got the judging process and the woodworker of the week and the person who unfortunately has to leave. And in the middle of all that, you've got a skills challenge thrown in where someone can gain immunity from uh, elimination that week. So there's so much to cram in, in an ideal world, maybe an hour and a half program for those, for that one. But you know, it doesn't work like that in the world of TV, does it? So uh, it was very fast paced. There's so much to cram in, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments, you know, if you haven't been in touch already, what you thought of the episode. Um, and you know, I did, I really enjoyed it. There was, you know, I'm seeing all, apart from my own, build I was seeing all the other stuff for the first time because once you know you start off you go you're so consumed in your own little bubble if you like that you don't know what's going on around you so although I saw the finished builds I didn't see the process that people were going through uh, and that was really interesting for me you know as a, from a viewer's perspective someone who's even involved in it so that was really really interesting right let's get on to my big build so the challenge was to create your dream garden bench uh, for yourself you know and a loved one uh, and you know to have a theme for it so my theme was uh, the red squirrels, you know, um, and the reason being is I live in a part of the UK in the northwest of England where we still have uh, red squirrels and we have a red squirrel dray in our back garden. Now, uh, if you're not, you know, you probably don't know this, a lot of people in the UK or outside of the UK, red squirrels are one of, if not the most endangered animal in the United Kingdom. The, uh, they were largely wiped out by the grey squirrels and the grey squirrels carry a pox that the reds aren't 
uh, resistant to so there's only certain pockets around the UK and, and in England there's only literally a handful of places and we're very fortunate to be one of those places and I get to see him, me and Pam get to see him on a regular basis in our garden. They're absolutely beautiful creatures. So I wanted my design to reflect that, um, you know, the theme of, of the red squirrel. The garden bench itself, uh, I believe it was Tom pointed out, it's quite a simple design, but if done well, can be very effective. Um, I agree, you know, when you look at it, that it looks quite simple. Uh, in its design but it actually does contain quite a few complicated angles uh, that I had to kind of really think of in order to get that comfort of it uh, correct because you know as they pointed out in the judging it's a very comfortable bench to sit on it and it's just got a little bit of angle back on it it's really comfortable to sit in and that you know wasn't by fluke you know when you got it when you get those angles right you think oh yeah this is really nice and you can spend some time in that you know and enjoy it in the garden like we've been very fortunate to do now you have uh, obviously you don't get it you not get it straight away you've got a, a short period of time to come up with your design idea um, and I wanted to use uh, when I thought about the idea of using I don't know if you call them chevron chevrons or herring bones you know both the same I think uh, I wanted it to be two different wood species and I give it that different kind of tone and colour and that's why I chose uh, oak and larch and they both weather well outside. Now I have my design process here, I'll zoom in on it um, and you know <laughs> excuse the writing and stuff but uh, using square paper makes it a little bit better for me because I was right-handed before I lost the use of my right arm. Uh, I was right-handed, so I've had to teach myself everything. I've had to teach myself to be left-handed. Now, in terms of handwriting, that's very difficult. Um, drawing and stuff. If I use square paper, uh, I'm not too bad at you know. So I, this is basically the design. I'll show you this page on square page. Um, we'll zoom in on that. So this is the design I came up with. Now the actual you don't get a chance to practice these obviously because you've only got a short window of opportunity but you've got to come up with you know how much wood you need for example and it's not a cut list if you like because the wood is on your bench and then you have to cut it all to size but you need to get your mental maths on the go and go and how much am I going to need what species am I going to need that kind of thing so and that was the same for everyone now uh, the leg design uh, so the kind of cross legs, real chunky pieces of larch. Uh, my design idea for that came from earlier on last year, so probably in the springtime of 2022, uh, I did Carl Pope's Build a Chair Challenge. Now, not a chair, it's kind of a bench, but I, I had a go with those kind of legs and I got the angles all wrong. Although I produced that bench for Carl, it was very uncomfortable, and but it gave me an idea of if I was going to do that again in the future, where I needed to improve on that. So the legs uh, are crossed over and I got the angles correct, but the actual joinery, so the joint itself, and I didn't know the name of it, and maybe you could help me out with this, a half lap joint, the two legs would literally go flush with each other, wouldn't they? But it wasn't a half lap joint. They kind of went in about a quarter of the way, which gave a ridge with another supported piece of timber for the bench part, the seating part to rest on. But I don't know what the name of that joint is. I think I called it a quarter lap joint, but I don't even know if that's a thing, but please let me know. So that was the actual design ideas for the legs. It took a little while for me to get going because you used to, you're not you're not in the comfort of your own workshop. Although you get like a health and safety induction around all the equipment and you get to see all the gear you're using, you're literally using the stuff for the very first time. Now, the sponsors for the show are Makita, Festool, Axminster, and Felder, uh, Hammer, Felder. And I've never used any Makita gear before. So it took a little while to get used to the mitre saw, a big, huge thing. And when I was doing the kind of quarter lap cuts, um, it, it was taking a little while for me to get used to this new equipment. Great stuff, it's just not what I was, you know, actually 
used to and that kind of slowed me up a little bit. So getting those legs and those angles, I was happy with that. Then we had the, the seating part of the bench and the backrest. So that was a frame that was using half lap joints and then across the top, um, I had the actual slats, if you like, and I put a little chamfer on each one of those, and then we made the and made the kind of herringbone chevron type shape. So there's the principle of the bench. It was kind of done, if you like, in three parts: the legs, and then the seating area, and then the back, and then the assembly part all come together at the end. Now, the squirrels themselves were some uh, pieces of oak, and you caught a glimpse of it. Basically, I had a uh, printout, if you like, of the squirrel outline, and I glued that on, and then I freehanded with a, a small bandsaw and cut the shape out. So it wasn't using a template like I would with uh, Martin from Chops Designs. You weren't allowed to bring templates or anything like that, and then just use a, a flush, flush trim route a bit to go around it. So it had to be all done by hand and yeah that was a little bit of pressure i mean it'd be pressure doing that in here but when you've got a you know a camera operator and a director and a sound engineer and some lighting people around saying how are you feeling about this leo oh yeah it was a little bit full on, <laughs> a bit full on but you know i was really happy with the actual shapes of the squirrels themselves and then for, to stand, there was a, a piece of oak and then routed out a little groove and I had a dowel underneath, stuck that into it and then they were mounted on top of the actual side legs themselves, if that makes sense. So the principle behind it all was pretty sound. Um, but when you're on the clock, uh, it's, it's a pressure cooker environment, you know, it, it, it's a challenging environment. You know, I, I basically had set out my stall, if you like, of certain steps of what to follow. And it was a real, real challenge. The actual timing, if you saw towards the end, that's not done for dramatic effect. Everyone was literally going at it on the projects, on the projects right till the very end. And I certainly was as well, just to get it, you know, to as good a standard as I possibly could. You know, I don't, I don't want to say highlighted the challenge, but my design reflect, reflected my, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, my reality perspective of how I work, my designs have to reflect that. You know, I know what I'm capable of doing at my pace with, the way I work with just one arm and I want to create something that is visually nice to look at in this case you know comfortable as well but also mindful and, and not over uh, not overestimate my capabilities in that short time frame so that's how you know I wanted my design to be realistic in expectations of being able to finish it if that makes sense I hope that makes sense um, and once it was completed, I had the chance to step back and take a bit of a look at it. I was really, really happy with how it turned out. Was it perfect? No. Will I go through the mistakes I made very shortly? Yes, I will. But overall, all things considered, I was delighted with how it turned out. Now, uh, if you followed the channel, if you're new to the channel, I say again, welcome. If you've followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I pride myself on being open and transparent about any project I'm doing, uh, obstacles I've faced, how I've tried to overcome them, and mistakes I've made and how I try to rectify them. Now, there was one big mistake in my design that um, there just wasn't, if it had been in here on a commission, it would have been back to the drawing board for one big part of it, but obviously you don't have that kind of thing with the time constraints and you know the situation that you're working in and the big mistake I made was this when you look at it square on in the middle the chevrons on the seat and the back don't line up and I was gutted about that because I really wanted the center of where the arrows point pointing upwards and towards you to line up perfectly which would really pop out that 3d effect if you look at it on an angle looks great yeah but when you're looking at it square on 
I made a mistake. And the mistake I made was this, was the actual seating area. Um, I, uh, when I was measuring out where the slats go for the half lap joints, I needed one obviously in the center for the chevrons to go in. So I marked the center point, put the, cut the half lap joints, made the frame and then mounted the chevrons, mounted the herring bones onto it. Perfect. What I did wrong was this, the backrest is bigger, it's longer because it was attached to the back of the legs. So it was several centimeters longer than the seat. And I took the center measurement of the seat and measured that on the back and I didn't flip the tape measure around to measure it on the other side. And then I would have realized, hang on, that's not the center. So I took that as the center measurement cut all the half lap joints, started doing that, and I thought something's not quite right here. But by that point, I was too far invested into it time-wise to, and I, and I didn't have additional material to, to do another one. So I had to go, what I ended up doing was I attached a additional piece next to the what I thought was the centre mark, uh, and then I referenced the chevrons uh, off that but it wasn't dead center so I was gutted about that I really was because uh, you know as Tom said simple designs it's got to be done effectively and it could have been better you know I'm beating myself up on fine margins here but it could have been better and I was disappointed in myself that I, um, in here I, I, I would say 85 90% uh, sure that that mistake wouldn't have happened because I would have stepped back and gone hang on that's not quite right in the very early stages but when you're in that kind of pressure cooker environment a little bit and you're just kind of working through your processes I, I, I didn't stop I didn't take a minute step back and think and I should have done so that was a, for me that was a big mistake um other things which I'm not going to say are necessarily mistakes, but if I, I was in here building that as a commission, and if I did do, God, I can't even begin to imagine the expense. It would cost an absolute fortune uh, um, just in materials. Uh, if I was building it in here, uh, there's a couple of things I'd do differently. And one was the actual mounting of the slats, the herringbone slats onto the frame. And I used, uh, I was allowed to take my and my Brad nail gun because if you see all, it's all fancy Makita gear, it's festival gear. And there's me with a Ferex a Brad nail gun uh, <laughs> because uh, they don't have them. The, 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 uh, my understanding is the, there was no use of compressors during filming due to noise, sound, that kind of thing. I, I, health and safety, I think as well. Uh, cables, that kind of thing. So, uh, sorry, pipes. Uh, but I use brad nails and stuff sometimes to, to pin things, to hold things in place, whilst I obviously use my arm instead of other people who just used another arm to hold it. So what I did was I pinned them uh, to the actual uh, seat frame and the back frame, and it looked a bit scruffy, I'm not gonna lie, you know, like some of them, because you're going through oak, it's quite dense, and, and I was having to tap them in because they hadn't gone in completely. If I was doing it in here, I'd have the laser line on or measure out um, a perfect line and I would countersink and screw them in and then use a plug cutter uh, to get some like small oak dowels or ash or sorry or large dowels uh, tap them in with some glue and then get a Japanese pull saw so I'd tidy it up like that the way I actually mounted the seating part to the side legs that's the method I used so I drilled through a countersink bit and then some huge uh, I think they were 80 mil uh, six M6 screws when you look like right in and then uh, got a plug cutter, cut some uh, little dowels cut out and done it that way. And that looked really tidy. I think that'd look nice and smart on the uh, chevrons, but I didn't have, I, I, even if it, I, even, I reckon looking back on it, if that would have been my plan, I probably would have sacrificed that because I wouldn't have had the time to do, do it and then just gone with, uh, brad nails because uh, I don't use a hammer as well if you've got to think about it because you've got to hold the nail in place before you tap it so that was the um, why I was used allowed to use the brad nail gun okay I hope that makes sense and then the last one is 
Uh, again, I'm really happy with it, but if I was doing it again, what I'd do slightly different is the what makes the bench really very comfortable is when you sit down, there is a bit of flex in it. And that's what I wanted, you know, I don't, you don't want a, a solid bench, you sit down, it's like, oh, I can't sit on this. So it does, it, it, it's almost cushioned in, in, the, in the wood design. So, but what I did was I made the frame with larch, um, and if I, the seating frame, and if I was to do that again, I'd make the seating frame in oak. Uh, the reason being there's just a little bit too much spring in it for my liking. Uh, what I've had to do since uh, it, it getting back home is just at the back I've put a, a, a little L-shaped piece of wood on the underside of the seating area and fixed it to the back of the backrest just to kind of take a little bit of that spring out because it was, it was looking a bit too much. I'm thinking you know, could that possibly go at one point? But I think if I did it in an oak frame instead of a larch frame, oak being a more dense wood, I think it would still have a little bit of spring, but not as much as what the larch has done. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so that's the uh, an in-depth look, if you like, or uh, a talking heads from me about my big build. You know, I was really, really happy with it. Um, I don't think I could have done much better uh, the only thing I think I could have done better in the time frame was not to have made that mistake about the alignment of the herring bones of the chevrons, and I was gutted about that. But that's you know, and, and sometimes it does come down to fine margins, doesn't it? So I would have liked it if that would have been dead on centre, but it wasn't. Right then, the um, the skills challenge, uh, and here it is, uh, and. Uh, uh, since uh, the airing of it, yes, I have had messages from friends who uh, makers who I know that uh, and pictures that look like this, um, <laughs> or another one that looks like this, showing uh, a nice uh, ring box that they say, "Oh, do you a good price for?" Or do I want to borrow the big lit up L and P's for the wedding? <laughs> um, and, and people say, "Oh, do we do we going a little bit harsh on?" I was like, no, "All really in good spirits." And if you thought what was heard was bad, that was only the tip of the iceberg. Once I let slip to Mel that me and Pam have been together for a very you know, long time, for over 20 years, 22 years I think it is now. Uh, we got engaged the Christmas before the car accident, so we've been engaged for over five years. Um, and when she said, are you, are you married? I was like, no, we're not married yet. And oh, that kind of that kind of set the uh, the domino effect, shall we say, uh, of, 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 of persistent reminders. Um, and no, we're not married uh, yet. Uh, so um, uh, uh, and apologies for <laughs> apologies. No, uh, but no, no, we're not married yet. But when the the the, the skills challenge was really really difficult for me. Um, as I said to you before, you know, uh, uh, and I'm not, this is certainly not an excuse, be, uh, I'm not trying to create excuses because I tried and I tried 100% and um, my mindset going in, you haven't a clue what's coming up when the skills challenge, when you walk up to the, the kind of marquee area where, where, where the, the, the skills challenge base was and you've no idea what it is when you go up. Um, and I knew they were going to be difficult for me. Uh, but my mindset was to give it 100% all of the time for the whole duration of it. And at least I can step back and say to myself, well, it might not be any good, you know, rubbish really, to be honest, but it wasn't for lack of trying, all right? I, as I said earlier, I, I have had to teach myself to be left-handed. Um, I don't think you realise how poor your non-dominant hand is until that's the only hand that you're reliant on um and but i'm um, you know obviously i have improved in that over the course of the last five and a half years you know that and a proof of that is videos that i've put out you know and i've built a workshop myself but what i really what i still lack um is is that fine motor control uh i really I, I, even now and i think you'll never achieve that level of 
fine motor skill in your non-dominant hand when you've spent 47 years, oh no, sorry, 42 years when it happened, uh, of just using your right hand. So, it, it, but when the and, and when when they said what the challenge was, I was like, oh, because my other thing is, um, I'm really not artistic at all. Uh, you know, Pam is an, uh, is an incredibly, incredibly talented artistic person, and and I'm not. <laughs> you know, I'm, um, but once the challenge was issued, there was always, was only one thing in my mind, you know, uh, and it was to do with uh, Pam uh, and myself, um, because. You know, I think um, it it when something like this, when 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 you go through something like this, and you uh, let me try and when you go through something that involves like an accident, if you like, and and you end up with life changing injuries, you, you do see the you know how hard it is on the people who are closest to you as well. It's not just you who suffers the disability, if you like, you know, the, uh, the, the, the burden you put on, you know, your loved ones and your closest one is, it's, it's hard, you know, it's tough. And I don't, um, maybe I'm not open enough still yet, to, you know, about being open and honest about those kind of things. But when the topic came up and the skills I, I wanted, my pathetic attempt at uh, the, 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 this kind of card skill thing to, to try and explain that a little bit better. And I gave it a go, I tried. Um, oh, uh, am I happy with it? Um, I, I'm happy with the effort to put in, put it with that, you know, I'm, I'm happy I really gave it a go. But when you looked at like, you know, uh, I loved Nathaniel's with the tree and it was so sad watching that having seen the, the tree that it was based on be vandalised and cut down a week or two ago which was horrific uh, you know I loved David's with his all you need is love and the, the theme behind that was fantastic and Paula's was just outstanding you know the the, the mountains it was just it, it, uh, I don't think the actual the video footage that did it justice you know when you look at it actually first hand pardon the pun uh, it was it was absolutely beautiful you know and paula thoroughly deserved that immunity from that episode one uh, absolutely brilliant okay folks i think i've covered i have waffled far much longer than i was planning on doing and i hope i've covered uh, everything there you know I, I know there would be people out there, you know, asking questions. Um, excuse me. And um, please uh, feel free, fire away uh, if you've got questions that you want to ask about uh, the, the episode, the build, the skills challenge. If you want to ask about my disability or anything, if you're new to the channel, you know, you're welcome to do that. Um, obviously, uh, each contributor is tied to, as you, as you would expect on this, you know, a non disclosure agreement thing. So, you, you know there's certain things you can't talk about which is perfectly understandable obviously and that's not just talking about future episodes and stuff uh, so you know I, but I will try to, to answer with my usual honesty uh, um, and openness uh, but obviously I can't be completely open about absolutely everything um, but you know if you've got any questions comment sections there Contact details, social media stuff's in the description. You know, fire away, get in touch with me via any of them. Right, as ever, folks, you know, take care, you know, look after yourselves. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.